Good morning, students. We're taking a look at the last thing we're going to do for math for this year. And we are just going to do our fact assessment. So remember, this is a two minute assessment. You can't use your whiteboards for this one because it's an assessment. So have somebody time you for two minutes. You're dividing by six, eight, and nine here. Once you're finished, you just have fact homework practice here. And remember, this one is five minute timing. So try your best, do your fastest. If you don't finish, that's okay. You have all summer to keep practicing and get as fast as you can. That way in the fourth grade, you are ready to go. All right, the next one is a lesson worksheet. And I'm not going to ask you to do this. You do not have to do this. If you want to do it, um, that's fine, but you don't have to. Remember, we just didn't have enough time to cover this or to review it enough time. So that's why you can skip it and I'll just write on here, skip. And then the last page here is a problem solving worksheet and that is the page we'll be doing together. So for this page, we're gonna be doing the make, you're sorry, not doing, but using the make it simpler strategy. Five rulers cost $9.95. Three books cost $8.97. Show how much Lynn will pay for two rulers and one book. So what do you think we're going to do for this one? How can I figure this out? Any ideas? I know how many five rulers cost. Five rulers cost $9.95. And then... I know that three books cost $8.97, but I'm only looking for her to buy two rulers and one book. So what do I know about the cost of two rulers? Do you think it's gonna be greater than or less than the cost of five rulers? It's gonna be less than that, right? Because um, I'm only buying two and this one is for five. So I know my cost is going to be less. How about if I'm buying one book and I have the cost of three books? Same thing. I'm going to only be buying one. So I know that my answers for both of these are going to be less than the answers that I have um, there, right? Okay. So what does this sound like to you? Do you have any idea of what I might do, what operation I might use. If I definitely have equal groups because the rulers cost the same amount and the books cost the same amount and I know the total number of money I'm paying for the rulers and the total number of money that I'm paying for the books. What operation do you think I'm gonna use? Definitely going to be division. And I think the way that we're going to do this, this is going to be um, kind of tricky. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to use long division. So I'm going to take my five and put it on the outside. And I'm going to put my 995 on the inside. The only thing different about this problem than the problems that we've been doing is now we have three numbers here, okay? And so instead of stopping after we bring down this number, we're gonna have to bring down one more number, okay? So think about how many times can five go into nine? Well, five times one is five, five times two is 10. Ten's too high. So we're gonna do five times one. I'm gonna put my five down here and subtract it. That'll give me a four. Now I need to bring down my nine. We're gonna bring our decimal up to the top, just like we do when we add and subtract and we bring our decimal down. We're gonna leave our decimal up there. Bringing down our nine, I now have 49. How many times can five go into 49? Five times what gets me closest to 49? Think about it. Well, I know five times 10 is 50, but that's too high. So let's do five times nine, which is 45. Okay, I'm subtracting again. Nine minus five gives me four. Four minus four gives me zero. Am I done? 
No, how do you know that you're not done here? There's two ways. The first way is, look, this isn't a zero. The second way is I don't have a number up here at the top. So I'm gonna drop my five. Now I have 45. And we just said five times nine was 45. So we're gonna put that up there, drop our 45 down here. Now I have zero here. Now I have numbers above each of the numbers at the top, which means I am finished. So I know that since I took um, five and I put it into 995, that one ruler cost 199. So let's write that over here. 199 equals one ruler. Okay, that was a lot of work. Now I need to figure out how much three books cost. So what do you predict my equation is going to be for doing the three books? Three goes into 897 how many times? So it's going to be the same exact problem. The only difference is I use different numbers, right? But look, it's still long division, and I still have three numbers here, so I'm going to have to do the same thing again where I um, have to check to make sure I'm done. I need a number above each of these three numbers, and I need a zero at the bottom. Okay, so let's think about it. Three times what gets me closest to eight? Three times one is three. Three times two is six. Three times three is nine. Well, I just went too high. I can't go over eight. I have to be eight or below. So let's do three times two gives me six. I have eight minus six gives me two. I'm gonna drop my nine. Don't forget to put your decimal up here at the top. Now I have to think three goes into 29, how many times? Well, this is kind of similar to the last one. I know three times 10 is 30, but that would be too high. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do go down three times nine and three times nine is 27. 9 minus 7 gives me 2. I have a 0 here. Am I done? No, because I still have a 2 here and I don't have anything written above this number. So I'm going to drop my 7. 3 times what gives me 27? Well, we just did that right here. It's a 9. So my answer is 299 is the cost of one book. Whew, am I done? Ugh, I wish. How many books are we looking for? Lynn is going to pay for two rulers and one book. So I'm almost done. I need to add 199 twice or multiply 199 times two. Either way. And then what do I do after I get this answer? I have to add in the one book because I want to know how much she's going to pay for two rulers and one book. So nine plus nine is... 18, carry my one. I'm going to have 18 plus one is 19. Carry my one again. I've got $3.98. Now I need to add the one book, which is 299. Eight and nine is 17. Carry my one. Nine and nine is 18 plus one is 19. Carry my one again. Three plus one plus two is six. So she paid 697 in total for, uh, what was it? Two rulers and one book. That's it. So think about what did we have to do to solve this problem? We used long division and then that told us how many, um, or that told us the price of one ruler. We used long division again to tell us the price of one book. Then we had to add two rulers and one book together. So that's why we did 199 plus 199. Then we added 299 to that total. So that's all we did for this side of the worksheet. Guess what? The back side of the worksheet is going to be exactly the same. So you can look back at this page and know that you're going to start with long division. Then you have to add up, add up whatever it is that they're asking you to add. So it's saying three bottles of water cost $2.97, two bags of chips cost 198
Show how much Sherry will pay for one bottle of water and one bag of chips. Oh, so this one's a little bit nicer because for this one, you just have to figure out what one bottle of water costs and one bag of chips cost and add those together. You won't have to double anything. At the bottom, it's just asking you, what's the cost of one bottle of water and one bag of chips? So you're just writing your answer. What problem solving strategies did you use to solve this problem? We use the make it simpler strategy that it says on the front. And then the last part is just tell us how you got your answer. If you're having trouble with this, you could rewatch the video to the part where I summarize what we did here, right? We did long division for um, both of the two items to figure out how much one water caught, or well on the back it wasn't water, but it was a ruler and a book. And then we added up the cost of two rulers and one book, right? So try to do this on your own. It's not easy. I do not think that this is an easy problem because the long division, we added an extra digit to, and then you have another step. So technically, you know how to do all this stuff, but it could be easy to make a mistake if you aren't paying full attention, okay? So if it's difficult, just try your best. That's all. Remember, we're just touching on long division, so um, you'll do more of it in the fourth grade. You'll have a lot more practice. So try your best. See if you can use the strategy we use on the back to solve this problem. And that's it for math for the rest of the year. Have a great rest of your day, guys.